Hi there. If you're a new viewer, welcome to my channel. And if you're returning, welcome back. Today, we will be talking about combinations in Python using the iter tools library. Without further ado, let's go ahead. Before I tackle the task, I would like you to remember that this is a Jupyter notebook on the right that will help me to explain things to you. And this is my HackerRank dashboard. So if you have seen my previous videos, you will remember that for us to be able to use a method from a library, like combinations in the iter tools library, we need to import it. So I'm not going to read the task yet. I just want you to remember that first thing first is that you need to import from iter tools the combinations. If you haven't seen my previous video, I've left the link up the top right. And that one was about permutations. So let me just import that one as well, so that I can show you what it means that what they both mean separately. So if I have a string called ABC, and I have k of value two, so this is the string that I'm going to be producing combinations and permutations from. And this is the length of combinations and permutations. So what do they really mean? Let me start with permutations. I'll add a comment. And all you need to do to be able to see the permutations of a string given a k value is to make a list out of it, because otherwise you can't see it. So call the permutations method, put your string here, and put your k here. I haven't run this one up the top. That's why I got the error. So this is the permutation. This is the meaning of a permutation. So you take A and B, which gives you this, then A and C, which gives you this. So you're done with A. Now you move to B, you go B and A, which gives you this one, you go B and C, which is this one, you're done with B now. And finally, you take C and A, this one, C and B, this one, this is the meaning of permutation. So you can easily see that A and B is a repetition of B and A. A and C is a repetition of C and A. B and C is a repetition of C and B. And this is the meaning of combinations. In combinations, let me just copy all of this, put it here, and call it combinations this time, and copy that, put it here. You will see that in combinations, we don't have repetitions. So we don't have A and B, B and A. We don't have that. That's why combinations are useful in a different way to permutations. So depending on your problem, you might want to use permutations or combinations. But today, in this video, I'm only talking about com combinations. So I will get rid of this one and I will clean up after myself. Brilliant. Let's see what the task is. You are given a string S. Your task is to print all possible combinations up to size K. So not just size K, up to size K. So for example, if K is five, you should be able to produce combinations of length one, length two, length three, and four. So that's the tricky part. And that has to be in a sorted order. That's easy. We can easily sort it. But let me quickly again show you on my Jupyter notebook what it means. So if I have a string of A, B, C, D, E, and if I'm looking at the list of combinations for my string of length one, you will see that it just takes A, then B, then C, then D, then E. What if I make it two? Well, I will see A, B, A, C, A, D, A, E. Then we're done with A. Let's move to B, B, C, B, D, and so forth. Of length three, same thing applies. Of length four. So now you can see that I could easily go ahead and make a loop that says for combo in range of one and K, and K will come from the user, I want you to give me the list of combinations for string and combo length. So let's make it combo. Let's make sure k equals three. I'll just make it a small. I don't want to be I don't want to make it really busy. Let me just make it like this. And get rid of that. I'm just making it very small so that we can see all of that. So 
from 1 to 3, you remember that in the range function, we don't cover the last one. So if you say 1 to 3, it only takes 1 and 2. It doesn't take 3. So if you are insisting I want 3 in, you make sure to add 1 to it. Otherwise, you're not going to see it. The task is I will receive a string and I have to produce all those length up to k permutations from that string. So let's go ahead and code it up. Well, I have a sample input here. I will receive the string and k in one line. So if you haven't seen my input video, I've left the link up the top right. Pause this one here, go watch that one and come back here because that will make your life way easier. Well, if you want to continue with me, let's go. I have a string and a k coming from the input function, which is separated by a space. So I use split function. But remember, the output of this is only string. So this is going to be a string and this is going to be a string. And I have to be careful to say change my k into an integer because I want to have a number, not a string to be able to use it. Once you have done that, you will need to write a for loop that goes through, as I said, your k plus one. Why did I do this? Because the task says, if I'm giving you a string and I'm telling you k is four, I want you to, com to produce combinations for k equals one, k equals two, k equals three, and k equals four. That's why I have this loop. Once I have done that, I will make a J in combinations of sorted string. Just make sure you sort your string before you produce combinations out of it. And then your I, which is essentially your combo, comes into play. So you're reading I from up the top here. So it will be, give me only one letters once this is one. Then you do all of that and then you say, okay, now give me two letters because this goes up and this goes up. So if I print the result just for J and if I give it hack two, you will see that I am very close to this output. I've got A, C, H, K, which is here, A, C, H, K, then A, C, A, H, A, K, C, H, C, K, H, K, which is this one here. Had I done this uh, with three, I would have received even more combinations down there. I am very close to finalizing this code. All I need to do is to join this together so that when I give it hack two, I will get very clean response like this one in the task. So let's first not forget to copy the top line, put it here, then copy all of this. Let's run the code. And if it runs, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. It did. And let's submit it for all test cases. Yep, they all run successfully. I hope, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, don't be shy. Leave your comments down there and I'll be more than happy to help you. See you later and good luck.